Hi everyone, Aiden here at the trailer. Today we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install this Frontrunner Slimline 2 platform rack on our 2015 Toyota 4Runner. Now this is going to be the one that gives full roof coverage front to back. They do make one that's smaller if you're looking for three quarters coverage, but this one is going to be pretty much the entire roof giving you the most space to work with. Let's check it out. To get a little more specific, it's going to be a little over 85 inches long and a little bit over 49 inches wide. So again, there's a lot of workable space. And with all that space, the slim line is going to be Front Runner's most versatile platform. There are some slightly raised sides here and channel mounts along all of those side rails, which a lot of their accessories are gonna utilize. And that's one of the big reasons you're probably looking at something like this is the wide expanse of accessories that Front Runner offers. Really the possibilities are limitless, whether you're looking to have an ax mount, a high lift jack, some water containers, a fuel canister mount, anything that they offer or that we offer here at eTrailer can mount up here and be used to build this into a completely modular system. Now they do have their slim sport racks, which are a little bit more bare bones and not as widely compatible with all their different accessories which is why for the 4Runner here, I think the slim line is the best possible pick because it's gonna give you the most options. Now, as far as how this fits on the 4Runner, I think it's gonna be an excellent option. It looks clean, it fits on there really nicely, and again, it gives you lots of options for mounting accessories. But it's not gonna be for everyone. This is gonna be very much a permanent install. If you notice, there's no factory raised rails. This removes them and replaces them. So if you're already using your factory raised rails for a roof rack or something like that, it's gotta go. This is gonna be your new system, which if you're only using your roof rack every now and again, this probably isn't the one for you because it's staying on here. But if you're someone who's going camping every weekend and really loading up your forerunner with stuff, maybe you've got a tent or a box that you wanna have some quick release mounts on here, you can use that and this is always ready to go, and you can kit it out how you want to make your adventures and your trips easier and quicker. So if you're looking for something a little less permanent, there's plenty of options on our site that can clamp onto roof racks or clamp onto those raised rails on the side, and plenty of other platform options from companies like Rhino Rack or Yakima that can clamp onto crossbars. But if you're looking for something that's permanently installed and it's gonna, I think, really fit well on the Forerunner, and give you the most options for a solid attachment, this is the one for you. As far as how the whole platform is constructed, it's a series of slats that are gonna run side to side across the vehicle. Right now, they're all spaced apart equally, eight inches center on center, but you can undo some bolts under here and move them around a little bit in fixed intervals. So if you wanted to take a grouping of these and smush them all together to make a more solid platform, you could. The other mounting holes are four inches apart center on center and that would basically have these slats touching. Personally, I would just leave it out like this because I think it looks the best and once you have it installed and assembled, you're not gonna wanna do that every time. You're gonna probably put it in one position and leave it there and use that to attach your accessories. For the accessories, there's channels in the top of each slat and along the borders here and one thing to note with this is that these channels are pretty narrow. So if you're familiar with T-Track accessories from companies like Yakima, or Rhino Rack, or Thule, those ones probably aren't gonna work here because their T-Track accessories are a little bit wider and they're probably not gonna be compatible here. So if you're looking at those types of accessories, I'd stick to the Front Runner brand because it's probably gonna work best with their systems. Some dimensions to consider here, from the roof to the tallest point of the rack, which is the side rails here, is only four inches. So it's pretty low profile. And there's a good amount of room underneath the bars too. So if you did have clamp around accessories, then you'd be good to go there. I would watch out for those clamp around accessories though, because these slats are three and a half inches wide. They're not very deep. So I don't think that'll be an issue. But if you're looking at accessories like that, just make sure the clamps open up wide enough to accept such long bars. At the back, our antenna does come very close, but it's not gonna hit. And our hatch, again, comes very close, 
but retains the full range of motion that you'd expect, coming very close to those side brackets that are the vehicle-specific brackets, but again, clearing, so you don't have to sacrifice any function of your vehicle. Just going to show how well sized this is for the 4Runner. All around, it's got a black powder coat finish, and it's gonna be really durable too. I didn't notice any of it scuffing or scratching away while we were putting this together and putting it onto the 4Runner. It's got an aluminum frame here, but all other components otherwise are steel, which is great. I want it to be nice and strong and durable where it needs to be, but save a little bit of weight where it doesn't have to be as strong and durable. Still, it's gonna be very thick and very sturdy. I'm confident that it's gonna perform well once you mount it up with all your accessories. Now, Front Runner doesn't specifically list a weight capacity for their platforms, instead referring to the vehicle's roof capacity. And since this bolts directly to the roof, that makes a lot of sense. So just be sure to check your vehicle's information and find out what your roof can handle to know what the platform can handle too. Overall, I think it's gonna be really strong though. And speaking of how it installs to the roof, that's what we gotta show you next. I'll be upfront and say that there is some drilling involved. For the most part, it actually utilizes factory weld nuts that your old raised rails attach to, but the front bracket locations here do require drilling and inserting riv nuts. So if you've never done riv nuts before, we'll walk you through that process, but you will need a riv nut tool. And for the rest of this, you'll probably want some silicone to seal up those holes and we're really gonna walk through how this all installs to the vehicle, not necessarily the assembly of the platform itself. Front Runner's instructions do a really good job walking through that, but we'll walk you through all of the drilling, the riv nuts, and the vehicle side of this installation. Let's check it out. The first thing you need to do for your install is get the raised rails off of the roof. These are the ones that come with the factory and they're not gonna get reused. The whole platform is gonna take the place of this. So, to get those removed, you need to get a trim panel tool and go to these end cover pieces here. Find a way to hook the trim panel tool in to this inner lip. I'll try my best to keep my hands out of the way. But when you get that in there, just pry out and kind of lift up from this inside edge here and pop it out. If something breaks, who cares? It's not going back on. So you can set that to the side throw in the trash, whatever you want. And there's gonna be two 13 millimeter bolts on the outside edge. And that process will be the same for the front, back, and both sides. Once all the bolts are removed, it just lifts up and away and to the side. Now the side brackets up top are gonna to mostly use factory holes the two locations here and the two locations in the back that our factory raised rails were attached to. However, since this is the full rack, we're gonna to need to drill some new holes to make mounting locations at the front of the vehicle. And to do that, we're going to get the side rail loosely in place to show us where we need to make those drilling locations. The kit comes with three spacers for each side, and those are just gonna drop down in over where our factory raised rails were, kind of filling in the gaps of this rubber strip. So two of them will go in the two cavities that we just made, and one of them is gonna to need to be for the new location. So I'll go to the ground, get the side bracket up here, and loosely install it into the four factory locations using the hardware that will later fully attach these longer hex bolts, flat washer and lock washer. So once we lift this up and loosely bolt it down, just make sure that all the hardware is in properly. It's not cross threaded or anything like that. And you can take your paint marker. I'm using a black one so it blends in, but we can still see it on that rubber strip enough to make a cut and make way for the third spacer block to fit in there underneath this bracket. So I'm just drawing two lines on the outside edges of the bracket so I know where to cut. This will take up that space between it. With that placeholder hardware removed, I'm gonna bring this back down to the ground for now and turn my attention to that rubber strip at the front here. There's a small lip where you can probably get your finger in and 
peel it up. And it'll go all the way to that one spacer and I can faintly see the two lines that I made right there. I'll go ahead and cut them with some snips or some scissors, whatever works. It's a pretty flexible rubber material and we can put it back in. Now scissors maybe aren't the best tool, but it did give me a much straighter cut than the snips I was using earlier. So if you've got something in between, maybe a larger pair of snips at home, that I think would be ideal, but scissors will work. Utility knife will work. Snips that are smaller will also work, but I think scissors here are giving us the best results. So that middle section is gonna get thrown away and the two larger sections will go back on the roof. The front piece lines up pretty easily with this clip and ridge right there. And the rest just kind of snaps in. And I left my spacer block back here in place. So I can just feel for that, line up the weather strip with that spacer block. And we're left with a space in here that should pretty perfectly fit our third spacer. Now to mark our holes, I'm using a center punch. That's gonna be really helpful to make sure that the drill bit, whenever we get to that step, doesn't skip around on us as much and we can hold it in place a little easier. Now I will say when using this, there's a little bit of side to side wiggle room. So I used the inside lip here to just kind of push the spacer against it. So I know that it's sitting flat with that section. Center this up with the slotted holes and push down a couple of times just to ensure that I get a nice clean spot where I can drill my pilot holes. Now the drilling is the fun part here. Probably the most intimidating, but don't worry. There's a good amount of space underneath. That doesn't mean just go straight through with all the force you can. Be careful as you kind of feel yourself nearing the end of the drill. Try to ease off the pressure a little bit so it doesn't totally pop through. But there's a good amount of wiggle room under there, so it's not as intimidating as it maybe feels. Start with a small pilot hole and work your way up to an 11 and a half millimeter or a 7 16 drill bit. That's gonna be our final size and what our riv nuts will drop into. So just take it slow and try to make sure that both those holes are even with one another. are small right now but hopefully with those pilot holes drilled out you can see how thick the metal in that section of the roof is that was one of the things that kind of surprised me at first so if it feels like you're drilling forever just keep checking it that's about the depth you're shooting for and the pilot holes are the hardest part from here each pass should be a little easier and i'll vacuum up the metal shavings between each drill bit pass so with the holes drilled out to the final size you want to take the riv nuts included in your kit and just give them a quick test fit. These ones are both popping in just fine. And we can grab some silicone to seal this up. And we'll drop our riv nuts in and crush them down after the silicone's in place. Now we're gonna thread the riv nut onto our riv nut tool. The tool does not come in the kit, but you're gonna need that for the install here. I'm gonna leave just a little bit of room there. Drop that down into the hole we just made and start to squeeze these handles up to crush it. Now, if you've never done riv nuts before, one way you can tell if it's seated properly is if it's sitting flush, but also just take your hardware, thread it back in, and once it's got a few threads in there, just lift up. And this one isn't budging, it's not going anywhere. It's very firmly in there, so we're good to go. We'll just repeat that for the other riv nut location, and I'll probably follow it up with just a little bit more silicone. I put a 
fair bit on that first hole, so that one might be fine, but just for safety's sake, I don't wanna leave a leak in John's roof here. So I'll just go back through with another pass and then we can get the bracket back up here and reinstall all the hardware. Now make sure you drop that third spacer back into place if it wasn't there already. Grab your side bracket and we can set this into place and just loosely bolt it in once again. Might be helpful to have an extra set of hands here to help guide this into position. And it's gonna be easiest probably to loosely install the front and the back hardware because the middle hardware is pretty difficult to reach. Now at this point, you've probably noticed that we've had the sunroof open and this is why. These two bolts in the middle here are hard to reach and if you can poke your head up through the sunroof and kneel on the front seats here, it just makes it a lot easier to see because the side bracket is bent over that part so you can't see it from the top like you can for the front and the back. The other thing to note for these hardware locations is that you're probably not gonna have much luck fitting a socket or a ratcheting wrench in here. So you're probably gonna have to do little quarter turns with the open end of the wrench. And again, doing it from here is a lot more convenient than trying to do it backwards going in blind. So I'm gonna go through and pretty much fully tighten down these ones in the middle here and get the other ones at the front and the back somewhat snug, but not fully tightened down, leaving just a little bit of wiggle room there until we get the platform in place. But I'm doing this one now because once the platform's on, it's not really gonna be accessible. You can probably get to it, but it's gonna be tough. So best to get this tightened now. Now it's time to grab an extra set of hands. We've got John here to help us out with his own vehicle. And we're gonna walk the platform from the front to the back and set it up on top of those side rails. Now those slats should line up with the bracket and some slotted holes that are located on the top. So just get those tracks lined up for all the positions. Really it's just the front two, the back two slats, and then the middle will line themselves up. We can grab the hardware and slide it in from underneath. We've got these shorter bolts included in our kit that'll slide into the channels underneath, pass through the brackets and secure with a flat washer and a lock nut on the bottom underneath the brackets. We'll repeat that for all the different hardware points, six per side, and you will have to lift up on the platform a little bit just to feed that in through the hole. So maybe keep that extra set of hands around if they can hang out for a while and just help out with this step, especially since that platform isn't secured. And one thing to note as well, just make sure that the wind deflector located on the bottom front edge of the platform is installed prior to lifting it up because once it's up there, we're not gonna be able to access it. Once all the bolts are in place, poking down through the brackets, just take one last pass through and make sure they're all lined up properly still. Ours are good. We can go back through, add those flat washers and lock nuts that we mentioned earlier. Once everything's tightened, you can go back and tighten any other loose hardware like on the brackets here and cap everything off with these little plastic caps. It's basically just gonna go on any exposed bolt or nut throughout the whole platform or brackets. Once all those plastic covers are over the hardware, you've got a nice clean install and you're done. I like to go through and just do a shake test, particularly around all the attachment points to make sure that nothing's moving around in a way that it shouldn't. Everything feels nice and tight and it's up there solid, it's not going anywhere. And that will complete our installation of this Frontrunner Slimline 2 platform rack system on our 2015 Toyota 4Runner. Thanks for watching.